Haitian migration to the United States was very small several decades ago, with the population estimated at approximately 5,000 in the 1960s. Haitians began arriving in the United States in larger numbers after Haiti descended into chaos following the collapse of the Duval Ed dictatorship in the late 1980s. The Haitian immigration population stood at 606,000 in 2012, up from 200,000 in 1990s. Haitians now constitute 1.5% of the total foreign-born population. The Haitian immigrant population in the United States is the fourth largest immigrant group from the Caribbean after immigrants from Cuba, the Dominican Republic, and Jamaica. The major metropolitan areas where Haitian immigrants resided included Miami, New York, Boston, Orlando, and Atlanta areas. These five metro areas accounted for nearly three quarters of the total Haitian immigrants residing in the United States. New York has the largest concentration of Haitians in the United States as well as the oldest established Haitian communities in the country. Boston has attracted significant numbers of immigrants from Haiti in the last 40 years. Miami-Dade County, Florida, based on government records, has approximately 100,000 Haitian immigrants, but due to some undocumented and some census errors, this number is larger. New Jersey is also the fourth largest population of Haitian immigrants in the United States. Philadelphia is a growing home to many Haitian immigrants. There are many reasons why Haitian fled their country to come to America. One reason is they were dealing with a dictator, Jean-Claude Duvalier also known as Baby Doc. He was a dictator of Haiti. He claimed himself to be their president for life. He was feared by many and hated by all. A few reasons why Americans left was so they can get away from him or he exiled them from the country. He later died but left the national poverty rate at an all-time low. Haiti is now being cleaned up by President Michael Martelli. Another reason Haitians left was because of the earthquake that hit in 2010 with a catastrophic magnitude of 7.0. This earthquake rocked the city and took lives and homes, which made it hard for people to stay and help, so that the ones that could were the ones that did leave. I interviewed my grandfather and father on their experiences moving to the United States. When my grandfather came to this country, he lived in New York with his friend. Not knowing how to speak English, he earned a low-wage job as a janitor in a local market. His main goal was to make money in America so that he could return to Haiti and help our family similar to what Greek immigrants did. But like most Greek immigrants, my grandfather did not return. Instead, he sent $100 each week to my father in Haiti. Not having enough money to feed the family forced my father to work two jobs in Haiti. He sold goat and coal. Once he had made enough money, he then moved to America when he was 18 to help my grandfather. When my dad arrived in New York, he began working at a local supermarket like my grandfather. 
Coming from the countryside of Haiti to the big city was a big unpleasant change for my father. The family then moved to Connecticut. While there, my father took a high school course to learn the language along with his five siblings. <laughs> Haitians have set up many businesses that catered to the special needs of their fellow countrymen. Along with barbershops and car services, they operate restaurants specializing in Haitian cuisine. Haitians able to support themselves and their families in America tend not to forget their allegiance to their homeland and relatives that they left behind. They are estimated to remit as much as $600 million a year to relatives in Haiti. These payments have become an important part of the Haitian national economy. Are you ready?